Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Is it allowed for Muslims to cheat the non-Muslims? I've gotten this question quite often from Muslims living in the West. And some people say, well, hey, it is basically a non-Muslim country. These are kuffar. We can cheat them because they're kuffar. And if you ask them, okay, give me some proof of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, says, Ya ladina amanu, awfu bi lukud. All you who believe, fulfill your covenants, your contracts, your discussion, whatever you've agreed upon. Now, I know people will get sometimes a bit um, sensitive about this issue because we have to understand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells in the Quran, all you believe, stand firm for justice, even if it's against yourself. Those who you love, those who are close to you, do not allow the hatred of a people to deviate you so that you can do something or commit something wrong. Even if you hate someone, oh, I hate this kufar, or all oh, this and that, right? Some people get to that kind of talk. They don't mind imitating them. They don't mind following everything they do. But when it comes to this issue, I hate the kuffar. Quite interesting, this selective methodology in dealing with things. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even if you hate them, okay, fine, let's say you hate them, you don't like what they do, fine. But do not allow that hatred that you will commit something wrong against them or anyone. All right? We find that in the West, there are people who are abusing the system. For example, and what I mean by this, justifying that this is a kafir system. Yeah, but you enter this country or you are in that country and you have a somehow a contract with them. And this is a complicated fiqh issue on what it means to live in a non-Muslim country, what it means to be under that law, what it means to... Uh, pay taxes and so on. It's, it's, I'm not going to get into that. But as a, if you are a citizen in that country and you've agreed to live there, then you have certain things that are bound upon you. And this is according to Sharia. No, I'm not talking about accepting a system of kufr over the belief in Allah. No. And yes, this is an issue of wala al bara or your allegiance, your love and your hate for the sake of Allah. But specifically when it comes to contracts, and that you agree to stay in that country, and you agree to be a citizen, and you have a passport, and you enjoy certain benefits from that country, tax breaks, health care, government support, welfare, child tax support or benefits. And then, you know, you have the audacity to say like, oh yeah, you know, I hate you. this. It doesn't make sense from an Islamic perspective. From the verses that I call you, that you're supposed to be fair, even if you, of course, you hate the aqidah, the theology, what some of these people do, the foreign policies. Yes, no doubt. But that's something, and your behavior is something else. So, some report, for example, that my husband is cheating with taxes. My husband is cheating on benefits, working on the, under the table, not declaring, taking benefits here, benefits there, declaring all kinds of false information, using false names, falsifying information, saying and justifying that they're kuffar. Uh, this is not about one person said, this is just, these are just kafir, you know? I'm a Muslim, I can do that. And just to make it very short, this is incorrect. This is actually haram. This is haram for you to have the mentality. And as I've already, already given you the ayat, Ya yuladina aman awfu bil The Prophet Wasallam stood by his contracts. Did the Prophet Wasallam have treaties and contracts with the non-Muslims? Yes, he did. Many treaties. Like, for example, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, and which Omar Khattab couldn't accept, for example, at the beginning. There have been treaties between the Prophet and many tribes of Arabs and Jews, Al-Kitab, from the non-Muslims. Some of them they broke, 
and they went against and they betrayed the other side on the Prophet and some of them were uphold, upheld. So the Prophet said, Allah is very clear. This is actually not even a thing that should be, should be debated. I hope no one's going to come back and say something uneducated with no proof that, oh brother, are you now siding with them or something? It's about, it's about justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed upon himself justice. Okay? And upon us to, add, to act with justice, adala, and fairness. This is one of the the corner stones of, of a Muslim, the, the pillars of faith when it comes to dealing with people, the mu'amalat. That a Muslim is upon his contract. The Muslim, as the Prophet said, he does many mistakes, many sins, but he does not lie. So I don't know where these people justify. Some of them half of the Quran, some of them so-called sheikh, some of them people who represent Islam. And their families are complaining about them, that brother, I think the problems that we have in our family, the divorce, the abuse, the this, the children, is because Allah has removed the barakah, because we are cheating. We've been cheating the system, enjoying the kuffar, what they have to offer, yet on the other side, we're portraying ourselves that, oh, the kuffar, I can cheat them. I want to read to you the psychology behind this and the reasoning. And it's exactly, I draw a parallel, inshallah, between this and what Beni Israel used to say. Uh, Beni Israel, i.e. the Jews um, at the time of the Prophet In Surah Al-Imran, verse 75, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Among the people of the book, there is one who, if you entrust him with a heap or a gold, or something of gold or silver, uh, became tarin, with small, something small. We'll give it back. No, sorry, this is big. Sorry, qintar, okay? We'll give it back to you. Okay, this is a qintar, this is something big. We'll give it back to you. And among them, there is one, if you entrust him with a single dinar, something small, we'll not give it back to you. At least you keep standing over him. Okay, so some people, even if you give them a lot, and look at that, look at the fairness again. Oh, you hate all the kuffar. Oh, the kuffar are all bad. Oh, we don't like. Yes, we're very clear as to what's going on. We're not kuffar pleasers here. And here, a lot of people have an issue with the word kuffar. Oh, it's so negative. Yeah, I mean, Allah is calling them kuffar, okay? So we're, this is just a term for the one who covers the truth and who disbelieves, who denies. Simple. It's not like a negative, uh, you know, condescending term. It's condescending from the fact or from the point of standpoint view of aqidah because they have the wrong aqidah. But that's with Allah. Tayyib. So, there's some people from Ahl Kitab, as Allah says. Surah Al-Imran, verse 75. Not all of them are the same, Allah says in another verse. If you give one a lot, a big amount, he will return it. He has trust, he has amana. But if you give someone a dinar, small coin, he will not return it, unless you keep going after him, right? It's, a, it's an issue of trust. This is what I want to get to though now. This is because they said, look what they say. And now you, if you are in that situation where you're cheating the system, using benefits, taking from here, taking from there, and in the back of your mind, you say, no, no problem. These are kuffar. I'm okay. And this happens a lot in the UK, happens a lot in Canada, in USA, Australia. What do they say? There is no way we can be blamed in this matter because of these unlettered people. Okay. قالوا ليس علينا في الأميين سبيل. Okay. There is no problem with us with this Ummin, with these with these Gentiles, these non, you know, these were Jews, but you know these kuffar. The Jews are saying, and these are kuffar. There's no problem. Allah will not blame us. ويقولون على الله الكذب, and they say. About Allah, وَيَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ And they say lies about Allah, yet they know. Like, do you really believe what you're saying? Look at this verse. O Muslim, who's cheating the system because they're kuffar. Are you using the psychology of a 
of these people that Allah is condemning. And they're saying, oh no, there's no problem. These are kuffar, right? Allah will not punish us. And Allah says, وَيَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبِ They say about Allah, lies. They lie upon Allah, وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ And they know. If you read the Qur'an, if you study, you say, I'm a good Muslim. But these are kuffar. You memorize the Qur'an, you read these verses, you've read through the Qur'an, tell me that you can actually get an excuse or that you can find a justification for this kind of philosophy. You have a huge problem in your aqidah and in your philosophical approach, your thought process, basically what I mean, if you think that way. And look who you're thinking like. I leave it at that, okay? Ya ladina amanu, awfu bi luqud. Or you believe, fulfill your obligations, your promises, your contracts. Barakallahu fikum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Please subscribe, inshallah, and share this video so that people can benefit and understand the problem because it's, it's really hurting us as a community. It's hurting the families. Allah is removing the barakah and it shows that we are not understanding Islam properly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.